trace me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love penetrates me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love penetrates me new life did he give each of my heart does my savior now live his love penetrates me new life Aloha, everybody. It's so good to be with you again. Thank you for tuning in to Kona Faith Center. And we're always glad to be available to you. So thank you again so much. Be sure and give us a thumbs up. And if you are not a subscriber, why not? So please subscribe and be sure and listen to the whole interview because it's going to be really good. Today, I'm interviewing someone that I've known for quite some time. And this is Ian. And he is going to start off by telling you a little bit about himself. Yeah, well, uh, as Pastor Terry mentioned, uh, my name is Ian, uh, born and raised here in Kealakekua, Hawaii. Um, we moved, I want to say, probably when I was like one or two, three, maybe. Um, all I remember is that I spent kindergarten, first and second grade uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, but... Fortunately, we moved back uh, here uh, for third grade, and uh, I've been here ever since. Um, I recently got married uh, to my wonderful wife, um, Kamaile, and um, I'm sure you'll be hearing her testimony sometime as well. And um, yeah, we have a, a fur pup, a Penelope, a French bulldog, and um, we're just living life and, and enjoying every day. Um, that God has given us, as well as um, what he has planned for uh, in us individually, but then also us as a couple. Um, and um, I'm just really excited about that. Um, what else to say about me? Um, I work at Hawaii Community College, Paula Manui. So if you're out there and you want an education, come see me. Um, but uh, other than that, I, I love our community. Um, I'm a huge um, supporter of my alumni, Konawaina. Um, and um, I just, yeah, I love our community and I love um, supporting it any way I can. So any siblings or? Yeah, so I do have um, some siblings. Um, one of them uh, is my oldest brother. He is about 13 years older than me. Uh, he lives here um, a little south of Kealakekua. And then I have a sister who's 10 years older than me uh, who uh, lives in upstate New York. Uh, and she has two cute little daughters. So my only nieces, uh, Michaela and Kelsey. And um, they actually recently came to visit, which was so nice. And I got to see them. Um, and yeah, I am the youngest. I am the baby of, of um, the family. And uh because of the age gap, it was almost as if it, I was kind of raised as an only child um, because of the, the huge age gap and sister would always babysit me. And it was, it was a interesting yet fun uh, growing up. I had kind of the same thing as my brother was five and a half years older and my sister 13 years older. So I was the baby and babies are the best in the family. Yes, we yep. can agree on that. Uh, I've known Ian for, when When did you start coming here? I started coming here in third grade, so is that around eight, eight nine? Eight, nine, yeah. yeah. And uh, how many missions trips have you been oh, on with me? yes. So mission trips, I would say I've been on at least five missions trips maybe with the church. All to Mexico, um, there was uh, a variety of um, purposes for these mission trips, whether it be a youth mission trip uh, where we would do like vacation Bible schools, um, construction mission trips, um, or just, you know, a group of um, like-minded people, whether it be youth to adults, just going to support um, the people of Arizona as well as Mexico. Yeah, they were a lot of fun. We yes. sure enjoyed those. I think I've probably done about 10 of them to Mexico and then mm -hmm. some other places. All right. Well, Ian, can you give us a testimony of something that you've experienced in your life? Yeah, you know, um, I think that the biggest testimony that I have and that I really feel the Lord um, calling me to share 
um, is that of healing. And um, when I was, I want to say third grade, about eight or nine, um, I was diagnosed with hepatitis C. And um, those of you that may not know it, it's a liver disease. And um, at that point in time, um, they, they realized that it was something that I had um, received at birth. And so I had been living with it probably for the nine years that I was alive. Uh, at that moment, um, we've done all the tests and everything. I think I was at like stage three or four um, cirrhosis of the liver. And, and, and doctors said that I wouldn't make it to 12. And so here I am at 31. And so right there is a testimony in itself. Um, but the, the true testimony that I feel that, that the Lord's telling me to, to share is that the, the process of healing and my expectation of healing as opposed to what God's plan um, for um, me receiving my healing. I went through three different um, treatments. Uh, the first treatment was uh, eighth grade. Right as I was transitioning into high school, I could remember having to take off pretty much my half or the ending part of my eighth grade year um, to go to San Francisco, um, California to do a clinical trial. This was the first time that they were gonna try this treatment on children. And um, because it was a clinical trial, went through it, had all the symptoms and whatnot, um, but found out that I was still positive for um, hepatitis C at the end of it. The results came in, I was on a placebo. Um, so that was a little discouraging. Um, having to you know, move to San Francisco for at least, I think it was two months, um, and go through this treatment um, in eighth grade, miss out my whole eighth grade experience pretty much, um, I can remember not having, being able to have all my friends sign my yearbook at the last um, day of school, things like that, um, and then to get the news that it didn't work. Can you explain what a placebo is? Yeah, so because it was a clinical trial, um, they had some children on full medication, uh, they had some children on partial medication, and then they had some um, children had placebo, which was... Um, sugar pill, a, a, just a, a fake medication, just right. to see, um, because it was a trial, try to see, you know, is it this working? Is it that working? And so I was, for, unfortunately, on that, that placebo. Um, but uh, at that moment, you know, uh, my mom, who is, is amazing, uh, did all this research, kept researching and trying to find what um, what she can do for her her baby, you know? And um, we found another treatment. Uh, this was my senior year of high school, right? <laughs> great um, timing. Great timing. <laughs> uh, my senior year of high school, um, this one was a full um, treatment, no placebos, no studies. It was in the state of Hawaii, so we didn't have to travel. Um, and this, uh, after I want to say six months to a year of, of treatment, uh, and, and the symptoms for this treatment um, could be compared to maybe that of like a chemo treatment. And, and another praise report, I guess, is I had minimal symptoms um, through all of my treatments. Um, it may have had some um, symptoms maybe the first night or two or the first week, but after that, it, it, was, it was easy and um, to say the least. The second treatment uh, was great. I finished it in about six months um, to a year. I was negative, I was cleared of hepatitis C, um, and I thought, wow, this is great, you know, thank you, Lord. And then uh, six month follow-up, um, they found out that it came back. And I think this was the hardest part in, in my walk with the Lord because you know, here I am, you know, trying to have all this faith in, in, in getting healed and going through all these different treatments and having, you know, having a fake treatment, having a treatment that was real and it work and then get the news that it came back. Um, I was, you know, um, 
I would say depressed. I would say angry. Uh, I could remember, um, you know, just yelling, you know, just trying to figure out what, um, what, what am I, what am I doing? What am I, what am I here for? You know, it's like, why is this happening to me? And, um, and, you know, it, it, it's really, um, and I think this is where it kind of gets into this bigger testimony, um, is that no matter where I am in, in it, you know, God was always there. Um, whether it be the, um, the flights being covered, um, I didn't think about it then, but I think about it now, my mom having to take a month to two months off of work uh, as a single mother, providing for her and myself, um, these treatments uh, being totally covered, having, you know, again, I said flights covered, um, the rental that we were at in San Francisco covered, everything was just covered. And and that in itself, again, is a huge testimony. And um, here I am in the the prime of my life, maybe, you know, I'm senior year trying to decide do i go to college do i not do i work what am i doing and then i have this weight on my shoulders of okay i i still am living with hepatitis c um lived with it for 19, 20, about three years um just thinking that you know i'm just gonna have to live with this um and then uh, my doctor shares with another treatment um and this treatment um was probably the, the worst of all because it's like they took all of those treatments and put all of those pills and shots together and, you know, created this um, super drug that to, to give me. And, and um, with all of that medication, all of that treatment, that was, you know, probably the, the treatment that I had the least amount of side effects. Um, and um, with that, um, I can say that from, and that was in my 21st birthday. I was around 21. So, of course, all of these milestones, you know, I have these things. And um, from 21, and now I'm 31, so 10 years, um, I have been cleared of hepatitis C. Um, and, and while some may think that, okay, yeah, well, medicine cured you. And, and I can say that while that may be true, there's so much that in this season that God had his hand in. And while, um, again, as I said, from the, the prayers, the, the flights, the, the housing, um, the, the people, the prayers, um, the community here at Quantum Faith Center um, that supported me through these three things. And that in itself uh, is really where I see God playing um, his role in this. And as I mentioned in the beginning, it was my expectation and, you know, my hope that, you know, it would just be like, okay, I say a prayer and then the next morning I wake up and I'm, I'm healed. But, you know, and sometimes it's not like that. God has a way of, of doing things and it's his will. And, and I feel that the, he healed me this way because he wanted others to be a part of this. He wanted the people of Kona Faith Center to activate their faith in, with me mm -hmm. and, and, and see the, the healing happen, see the miracles, see the, the testimony, um, and all the people that donated miles, you know, who were unbelievers and, you know, just family or friends could witness this. And I think there was so much bigger, um, so much more of an impact um, that God had in this plan as opposed to, you know, saying a prayer and he healing me the next day, which would have been wonderful. But there's such a bigger plan when it comes to our lives. And, and I can only think that, or only hope and pray that, you know, this gives hope to somebody out here watching. Um, and, you know, as I move forward in my life, you know, as I share this testimony, I, I really hope that others will find it as hope that, you know, you may be struggling through something, you may be struggling through health issues or other uh, issues, and you may not see the results right away. But that doesn't mean that God's not working. Um, God's continually working. He's continually seek, um, seeking to see us um, as full and whole. And um, we just have to trust and, and believe 
um, and not um, weary from that or drift away from that and know that he's working. And we may not see it all right now, but, you know, here I am 10 years, you know, out of it, and I can look back and see God's hand in every single piece. And and I think that's that's one of the biggest miracles, the biggest testimonies that that I think that I would have to share. Yes, I remember <laughs> those years because I've known you since you yeah. started coming to the church. Yeah, and I know it wasn't an easy time, but you even when you didn't receive the healing the second time, I know that you kind of were wavering in your faith, but you came back to faith. And it's awesome that it's been 10 years. I yeah. just, wow. Yeah. That, that's a big wow. So now I'm going to ask you, uh, we know when you started coming to Kona mm -hmm. Faith Center, but why have you stayed? Why did you stay through being a, a teenager, a young adult, and you're still here at 31? Yeah. And t you could talk about some of the things that you do here at the church. Okay. Yeah. And so I really play, I think the church played a huge part um, in this miracle in, in my upbringing. Uh, as I mentioned, I was in third grade when we started coming here. And uh, I believe the, the Lord told my mother to, um, to really um, trust um, him in choosing our church. And so she, um, she wanted to make sure that, that I felt comfortable in the church, that I um, basically got to kind of choose, you know, where we were going to go. And um, we went to many churches, and, and this one I, I felt at home at. Um, and it was really because of the children's church, um, the children's church aunties who were all there and, um, and know me. Um, thank you, I should say, first <laughs> off. I may have been a little kolohe um, back then, but um, it was really your service to the children's church that really... Um, allowed me to say yes to Kona Faith Center. Um, and since then, uh, I've been coming to Kona Faith Center. And, um, and I think what's really kept me here is the, the way that Kona Faith Center operates. Um, it's not just a church. And I think, or not just the, the way that society views church now, uh, Sundays and Wednesdays, you know, listening to a message. Um, Kona Faith Center is, is focused on, on families and focused on relationships. And, and I think those two things are huge um, reasons why I stayed here at Kona Faith Center. The relationships that I built with those um, aunties that were raising me up in children's church who are now, you know, aunties still in the church that I'm working with in other ministries um, and built relationships with in and out of church. Um, the friends that I've made um, in church, um, going through, you know, children's church, youth, um, and now young singles and, and uh, ecclesia. Um, there's so many like-minded and um, people of my age that I can connect with um, in, a, in a safe area that works on building my callings and giftings. Uh, another thing that really kept me here was... was um, this idea of, of service, and, and not to think that, you know, it's work, but Kona Faith Center allowed me to um, learn skills, um, build skills um, in areas that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else besides maybe having to go and, and pay, um, you know, lots of money to learn. And, and that would include, you know, tech, uh, being able to do the audio, video, camera, lighting, things like that, um, as I served in the tech ministry and continue to do today, um, I really um, credit Quota Face Center for um, who I am today um, in the maybe educational sense. Uh, I didn't go into college right away. Um, I stuck it here in the church. I went to a ministry training school with Pastor Jason um, and through the classes here, through the ministries here, I was able to learn life skills, you know, time management, organizational skills, um, all of these soft skills that really helped me uh, in college. And so to think of church as just okay to go in on a Sunday and get a good message, 
that's the wrong idea of, of this church. It may be some churches, but this church is really focused on you, your family, um, your relationships that you build with, and really um, building upon what God's called you to do. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's seen in my life um, in, in every area. And so I think that's really what's keeping me uh, and has kept me is that this um, structure here at Quinnipiac Center. Amen. Amen. And one of the most important things, you met your wife here. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that was a 10 year prayer process, too. And, you know, it's um, the teachings uh, from youth, um, the the guidance from our senior pastors and, and the aunties and uncles here at uh, Quantafay Center allowed me to find my wife in a godly way, um, to put my expectation and, and trust in God um, to bring that. And I really feel that um, God's way of finding your spouse um, is um, credited to Jenny Mayo, uh, who's a, a youth pastor uh, in the mainland. But um, you know, master, mission, mate, you have to have a relationship with your master, God. Um, and then you got to figure out what your mission is. What, what has God called you to? And then um, God will bring your, your spouse. And, and that's what happened in my life. Um, you know, I tried to build that relationship with God through, you know, youth and through um, ministry training and uh, was able to kind of find my calling and my purpose in life. And when I wasn't even looking, um, God gave me my wife. And she is awesome, <laughs> and she's going to be interviewed, so you'll get to meet Kamile, too. Thank you so much for tuning in. Ian, thank you so much yes. for coming and no sharing. Thank you. And uh, I could remember you as a little guy. <laughs> but I've enjoyed watching not just your, you know, physical growth and personal growth and maturing, but just what God's done in your life over these years. It's, it's, you've really been an example and to the others when you know you did youth ministry and you've been an example for the younger people over the years and for the young adults and now for the young marrieds. So I really do want to thank you for stopping by and getting yes. interviewed today. Again, if you live in the Kona area, please stop by and Captain Cook and come visit us and you'll get lots of hugs and lots of love, so be prepared. And it's been a pleasure being with you today. Don't forget that thumbs up. God bless you, and we will talk to you soon. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. It is only by your Spirit could this have been done.